News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And a very good evening to you and welcome to Newsline Live. We're broadcasting as we almost always do from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo and we broadcast on TV One, a very proud member of the Capital Maharaja Group, CMG. And this evening we have a guest uh, to discuss a very pressing issue and that issue is this that the government of the day or certainly some members of that government appear to think that the people are absolute fools that the people don't understand anything and that everything and anything can be blamed upon the actions of the people forgetting the fact that it is government who have a responsibility to maintain law and order and so on and so forth my guest this evening is Dr. Nalin Dajatissa of the JDP, of course. Very good evening to you, Doctor. Good evening, Faras. Now, for ever and a day, I have noticed this, and I'm sure the Republic has noticed it, and this is this. When a member of Parliament is arrested for something or other, um, usually they get remanded or something like that, but whilst they're in remand, they are able to turn up to Parliament whilst they are in remand, as a, as a remand prisoner. Well, Section 13.5 of the Fundamental Rights of our country, 13.5 says, every person shall be presumed innocent until he is proved guilty. Dr. Nalinda Jatissa, having viewed what happened today between uh, Field Marshal Fonseca and Sarat Sekra? I wonder if you thought to yourself which bit of 13.5 didn't Sarat Sekra understand? Why shouldn't that other member of parliament come into, uh, into parliament even though he is in remand? Yes, for us, we are following the traditions of the Commonwealth Parliament, the British Parliament. So uh, we have norms and traditions. Every parliamentarian has rights from the standing orders. So though he may be uh, Rishad Baduruddin or Sumandiran the next day, uh, Udaya Gammampila, even uh, Premier Mahindra Rajapaksha, yeah. they have equal rights by the standing orders. So uh, that parliamentarian, he is under the custody, under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Yeah. But uh, now that, that statement shows the thinking capacity and the thinking pattern of the uh, police minister, yeah. Saratvira Sekara. Three days before, the Attorney General Department, the Attorney General uh, informed the CID director that no uh, restrictions to any parliamentarian to enter the parliament while he or she is in custody. Mm. So before uh, made, uh, ma ma making commit commitment, such commitment in the parliament, Sarat Virasekara should have read the letter sent by the AG to, to a director of CID, the CID is under uh, the police minister. But even if he failed to do that, he could have merely referred to the Constitution of Sri Lanka. Why not? Where it says very clearly that, uh, you know, you don't need to say it, but it said. It's 13.5, no. it's I there. I think that shows the, the, the members of the government that they think now they have the ex executive power. They have the two-third majority in the parliament. By the Constitution, they have uh, more President, more executive power than the previous government. So they think that they can do anything. And then they are neglecting the constitution and the common laws, traditions, norms. But th that's, a, that's a pattern they behave. But seriously, they, what they're actually doing is they are damaging uh, the image of our, the people of our country. Because they seem to think that the, the people are complete fools. In one side, they are damaging the image of the country in international wise, internationally, yes. and the other in in other other way, why uh, Sarat Sekara 
uh, made such an st such a statement i think that he is going to uh, enjoy the vote base mm. of this government like now they are failing the economic development they are failing the covid prevention they fail in the uh, well governance mm. and they fail in the 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 uh, the rule and law mm. so now they are using like such uh, what do you call that uh, in uh, in and out i mean in periodically mm. he he say he, he says that uh, now uh, he is going to uh, give the military training to the youth mm. uh, he is going the, the government is going to ban the uh, death i mean the, the, the death penalty yes well yes. He, you know the thing is this uh, the way these some of these ministers speak or some of these politicians speak they do so without any due regard to this it's the constitution of the, our country they they think they can do absolutely anything and you know we the people are going to have to wait until the next election day to get rid of these uh, so and so's and uh, he is not, not only a parliamentarian, but he is the minister of the uh, public security. But it's absolutely astonishing that that minister doesn't seem to, uh, to be able to recognize one of the fundamental principles that anyone is innocent until proven guilty. And therefore, he has certain rights and they should be able to come to parliament if that is the case. No, if he doesn't know the constitution, he should have get the... Uh, consultation from the experts at least as I said at least he should have read the letter given by the Attorney General but they just come there and waste our time our money because we pay for them to sit in Parliament not only that statement they are they are ruining our money uh, public funds in every time I, d I wonder do you think uh, Dr. Nalinda I mean you you were in Parliament do you think that these people think, some of these people think, that the people are complete fools and that they will not care or they don't notice? You know, because we pay for them to live in this very air-conditioned lifestyle. Yes, they think so. Uh, recently, uh, Mr. Kehli Rambukwala, the cabinet spokesman, yeah. said it uh, very, you know, very open that the government think that the uh, people is intelligent but they are not intelligent like that in the in the in the failure of covid prevention they try to put the blame over the people in in one state minister said yesterday that uh, the sri lankans are not uh, disciplined in such a way that mm. that that uh, media spokesman said the people are not intelligent intelligent so that so, is so i'm sorry but you know, if the people are not intelligent, yeah, yeah, and the government is only giving advisories to the people, try and behave, don't go out, don't make unnecessary journeys and all that, the people will be the people, right? Why did they seek, when we asked them at the beginning about why they were looking to have a two-thirds majority, they said they wanted strong government. So when it suits them, it's strong government, but otherwise it's just a laughing matter and that all the fault can be blamed on the people. And when they take the power to, to strengthen the executive presidency and uh, when they take the power to ensure the two-third majority, at that time people will interject. But now when they are governing the country, when they, when they show their failures, they blame the people and the media media yes now they are going to suppress the media social media and they try to uh, curtail the voice of the people so this is the same pattern similar pattern of such kind of government why do you think that this government didn't take stern preventive action prior to the Sinhalese Tamil New Year it's very serious case. You know that uh, on 8th of April, the research team of the Sri Jadbrana University 
clearly convey the message to the government yeah the new mutant or the british variant found in sri lanka actually uh, this variant found in sri lanka four months before yeah. with foreigners but in with local individuals they found first time on our april 8 i believe that they directly conveyed that message to the health ministry to the presidential task force to the army commander and the president i saw one uh, interview with uh, that dr jeevandara he said that he was shocked he was alarmed that when he found that british variant in the country so that very sensitive health information they received on april 8th as same as that on april 4th of the 2019 the government received the intelligence information regarding the easter sunday attack mm. so this is very much similar so it looks like april is a bad time yeah. and from april 8th to the uh, for the uh, until the new year the government didn't take any action to acknowledge the people even the head of the prime minister office mr yoshida rajapaksha he went to norelia for vasanta sena kelia with mm. his wife so what happened i mean having this th such kind of sensitive very important information in the hand now they didn't do any restriction to the and uh, travel restrictions of people so people went here and there they went to nuareli and radhapura kataraga a number of the photographs that we saw also showed that there was hardly anyone wearing masks yes that started from the top i mean when we uh, remind the end of the march and the uh, the beginning of the april that the government tried to show now the covid uh pen i mean the covid uh, situation is uh, going down and uh, they they held the gamma samaga pilisandara in the first of first week of april and no masks no distance of the people the distance was there with the president and the people mm. but among the persons there was no distance so the the information the message went to, to the mind of the people that now right the 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 uh, positive cases are declining it be, it became uh, of 100 to 125 so the government uh, ceremonies gatherings are going on, were going on mm. so that's why people went here and there for the picnics and uh, to uh, to buy the goods for the festival is not of, not not the fault of the people the the sensitive information had the hand of the government mm. the the presidential uh, task force and the the government officials they should have acknowledge very correctly to the people i know we see that in second first and second wave how we were, we are, we were we were able to manage it with the support of the people yeah they they followed the guidelines of the health they followed everything so we we i mean the police arrested some people but it's uh, not not a big number mm. people trust the guidelines and they they followed the guidelines this time the failure came from the top of the top of the government well, how, well, are you saying that they should have closed the roads down or they should have imposed some restrictions some at legal restrictions to stop the people from moving at least about. at least uh they told the people that the british variant came to the sri lanka and it's highly spreading and it's it's highly deadly and it uh, attacks the uh, young population i think people themselves restrict their uh, uh, movements mm -hmm. then we can uh, uh, arrange some uh, legal restrictions mm -hmm. because you see in the prevention of covid in sri lanka Yeah. we have three important factors what i can i can say one thing been island second thing for 100 years near more than 100 years 
we have a well established health mechanism up mm -hmm. to the ground level mm -hmm. third thing we have a, we have a population with discipline and we can uh, guide the people with uh, good education i mean mm -hmm. the, the information yeah so these three positive factors we can we can have used but I mean, now the, the, the strategy of the media, strategy of the government is, now they are showing India. Earlier they showed us Italy. Mm -hmm. Whatever, the, now the India is uh, ruining anyway. But, but now, the, these, are today, all, these are all sort of funny games yes. uh, that they play to get the people to forget about the, or to digress and to divert the attention of the people away from the real issues the real issues like the economy and so on. We'll take a look at all those issues after this short break when we look uh, right now at the headlines for the primetime news from News First. News First. News Back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Dr. Nalin Dajatissa from the JVP. Several questions about this, so let me get rid of it. They say that it is the Speaker who makes the decision as to whether a Member of Parliament can come in, if they are being held on remand and so on, and that Veera Sekera only made a request. Uh, do you think the Speaker doesn't know these rules? No, as my information, that Speaker trying to uh, make that issue in very constitutional, like he, he, he didn't take the uh, the Saratvira Sekara's uh, uh, request hmm. and uh, the speaker tried to show the uh, situation of COVID. Yeah. Nothing else. But I, I think he knows the problem that preventing uh, the par parliamentarian to enter the parliament under his in custody by the uh, PTA, it's uh, unconstitutional. Hmm. He smartly trying to uh, turn the Saratvira Sekar. They're trying to twist and twist. turn. Yes. They're trying to do yes. their little deals and yes. play their little games because as usual. As my knowledge, uh, it it was discussed in the party leaders' uh, meeting. Mm -hmm. At that time, speaker showed the situation of COVID. Nothing else. But Saratvira Sekar, uh, he is uh, to to uh, targeting very cheap popularity. Mm among uh, the people mm. he made such a such a statement it actually it the the harmfulness of the statement is it will i, I think it will consider highly by the international community well absolutely the international community are already suspicious about this government's uh, ultimate intentions they uh, they accuse this government of not investigating uh, the claims of uh, various departures of due process in terms of the war and so on and so forth and that that uh, that is on the one side then when you try and do this is the basic that if you until you are proven guilty you are innocent yes. therefore if you are if you request that you want to come to parliament then that's what will have to happen if it happened, I mean, if, if it uh, happened in the parliament, as the statement by the, as, as the request by the Saratvir Sekar, by Saratvir Sekar, it will have very uh, dangerous tradition to the Sri Lankan parliament history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It may discuss in the Commonwealth parliament even. So, the problem is, Saratvya Sekara himself doesn't understand the gravity of the cabinet portfolio. But I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Nalin, but I, I find that absolutely incredible uh, that a person who cannot appreciate 13.5 uh, of the Constitution, which is that uh, any person who is presumed to be innocent until proven guilty, that that entire basic democratic concept is unavailable in the mindset of that minister. 
or it appears that way because otherwise he wouldn't ask such a question. And in anime, anyway, that uh, it shows again that the military mind can't uh, forward the country or the democracy. Even the politicians, actually, if, if they are dealing with the people, they can uh, consider the constitution, the I mean, the public opinion. But if someone always thinking the military base, military ground, it should happen. There is another problem that appears to be in the making, and the latest, uh, uh, the latest diktat is that um, chemical fertilizer shall not be imported to Sri Lanka. Really, uh, we have Sri Lanka has two thousand one hundred and ninety-nine million dollars, American dollars, worth of um, agro exports. We spend in reverse four hundred million dollars on fertilizers and pesticides and so on. So there's a net eighteen one thousand eight hundred million dollars. Right now, when you snap like that and make a very uh, dictatorial almost uh, decision to stop everything less like that. It's very military, by the way, right? That's how I see it. It's very military. You clap your hands and it's done. Or like a king even. That doesn't matter. But that's, that's what's happened. Now, honestly, at the next harvest, maybe there's enough for the next, uh, for the next season. But what's going to happen to our tea exports? Over 1,300 million worth of dollars. For us, uh, as my experience, we are a nation that we never learned lessons from the past. We have enough political experience in the past and the, the out, such outcome of the such political decisions. Anyway, I expect that the president will not reverse this gasset because I, I, I think that the president came to that decision with the consultation of experts in agriculture field. So as uh, the previous gasset notifications, I expect uh, it won't reverse. So we'll see, we'll see, he's the president. Anyway, he's the president with executive powers. He has a lot of occasions, chances to get the opinion from the experts. But are the experts really experts or are they wannabe experts? Do the experts know what they're advising our president? I mean, there are a lot of experts who can advise in any field. But the problem is, the political leadership is not ready to learn that uh, from the experts. Now, when we raise you know, what I happened raise... in the, this uh, resurgence of the uh, the pandemic, yes, the political leadership doesn't bother about the uh, information data given by the experts of the health. But the, the, the part that I can't understand is that when we raise the subject about why didn't the government have strong, decisive action prior to the last holiday set, the single this time of New Year, uh, knowing that the whole country will be on the move, one of the answers is, oh well, you know, Sri Lanka is a democracy. So if that is the case, and if only advisories are good enough for the people, then why do we have a police department? Why do we have an army? De democracy is not the uh, stick for, I mean, it is not a ro uh, passage for every foolish activity. Mm. I mean, democracy is the opinion of the majority. I mean, that's why democracy give, a, give us the chance to get the several opinions mm. and to uh, balance them and that's why we need uh, experienced political leadership to run the country. Huh? 
now we are facing the lack, lack of experience and the stubborn of the leadership. At least, I mean, in, in, in all these issues, banning uh, the fertilizer, the prevention of COVID, uh, banning some uh, food items, mm. and the economy, they should have learned from the experts and they learned from the past, the experience. The stubborn mind won't ready to get such information. What about the um, sugar scam? Is there another one like that? Yes, maybe, we'll see. We, we, we went for the court mm. and we expect uh, uh, just from the court, even we, 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 ha we have to uh, keep the trust on the Supreme Court and the Appeal Court. Uh, we'll see, but uh, the, the, the chairman of CWE at that time, yeah. Nishad, he transferred to the SLSI and there was an incident of uh, toxin of crude oil. Mm. Then uh, he, pa, resigned, pa, this is a he resigned from the uh, chairmanship. So what happened? The SLSI is under the president. So she should have to do something. People give the majority of the parliament and the power to the president to do, to rule the country. So he can't uh, escape from important issues of the people. Do you think, this is the last and final question, what we are facing is the direct result of our being encircled by generals? Only 18 months finished. Hmm. We have to wait another three and a half years, anyway. Will there be anything left of the country? Yes. We'll see. That's a challenge. It's a challenge? Yes. It's all a game, isn't it? Game. They know, they know the game. They are playing the game knowing everything. But people doesn't know what the game they are playing, the, the rulers, yeah. politicians. So it, the, the, the people are not aware whether they're playing rugby, football, cricket, gudu, <laughs> anything. They yeah. know that only that they're playing a game. That's why after two years, we couldn't find the mastermind of the Easter Sunday attack. That's a game. Well. Um, no, Dr. Nalini Jai, thank you very much for being so uh, upfront and open. But now it's time for the prime time news from News First. In the meantime, take care. Have a great evening ahead of you. And as always, God bless you.